What? No, no. I'm doing it. I'm redoing it. I don't like the other ones. We're out. We're out to all my fans. That's uh, as many as four, if you include uh, them as feel sorry for me and the dog. Any road, I want to talk about um, black country fossils. I've got a Boston collection. I like to uh, collect fossils that have got no aggregate on them. In fact, I'll show you a few now. Yeah. Most of the time, I just leave them behind for other people to find, but uh, it's nice, now. It? It's, it's a lamp shell. I think it's called Terry Bratula. It's a brachiopod, that one. And um, got some bits of coral here for this one. Christmas pudding. Aleo Lighties. This one I got in uh, Wren's Nest. Dudley. I think that's called Omphima. You need to look these things up. I've got the best book here. These are uh, Murchison's Siluria. So you uh, got this pictures of the coral. Look, you can see them there. Better than looking on the internet, I reckon. Mind you, it did cost me 500 quid. But I know what y'all want to see. You want to see the Dudley bug, don't you? I've got this little bug there. Yeah. Look at his little face. And his eyes. He ain't winking at you because he ain't got any eyelids. But it was the first creature to have eyes. Curled up like that. Here's another one. Trilobite. Three lobes. One, two, three. But also that way as well. Kephilon, Thorax and Pygidium, they're called it. Talking of eyes, he's, he's, a, he's one here. You can see he's got no eyelids. It's like a um, compound eye, like an insect. Got another species here. It's a Dudley bug. It, well, sort of. It's, uh, it's called Dalmanites cordatus, I think. Sometimes called Phacos, Phacops cordatus. Dudley bug, sometimes called the Dudley locust, but I don't like that name. Um, its posh name is Kalimini blooming bacchii. Now, we looked that up because it sounds a bit weird. Kalimini is uh, Kalimini's moon. No, Meni's moon, obviously. Kalimini's uh, obscured, covered up, covered up moon it refers to some sort of morphological characteristic. Blooming Bacchii, that's named after um, Johannes Blumingback, German anthropologist. The bloke that named it that is called Brogniart, French paleontologist. But I'll come back to that name Brogniart in a minute. Um, in the meantime, I'll tell you about uh, where I got these fossils from. Most of them, see some more coral here, I've got a whole load of stuff. Most of them are from... Uh, it's Doe End Railway, cutting about a quarter of a mile from where I used to live with my mum and dad. And uh, the kids in school used to wonder where I got all my fossils from, so I took a few to this railway cutting. Now, one day, I was there with these sort of little kids. Trains are supposed to just whoosh past you, aren't they? Well, this one time, he stopped. God got out with his uniform on and his cap. One of the kids I was with, they know him very well. He starts running off, then he chucks himself on the floor and starts blarting like a baby. He'd never been in trouble before. The guard says to me, What's the matter with him? I said, oh, I don't know, I think he fell over. It's all a bit embarrassing, really. But he wanted to check that we were um, putting pennies on the line. We was, but uh, he was looking for fossils and all. Funny thing is, you can't go there nowadays. Well, you couldn't go there any road because it was a railway. But um, it's an SSSI. That means um, you can't take anything. Don't mean it's a Gestapo Special Security Intelligence Unit. It means stands for 
site of special scientific interest. There's uh, the fossils there, so rich and varied, and you can't find it anywhere else. Funny thing is, a quarter of a mile down the road, a place called the Ash Mounds I used to go to play. Industrial archaeologists' uh, paradise. The cut's still there, but it's all gone now. The money makers have bulldozed all the mounds into the quarries. But they had everything, they had the quarries, which we used to take the clay out and that for the brickworks, the brickwork ovens themselves, all the uh, all abandoned and derelicts, but it was good fun. I found a pair of bellows once in one of the old uh, broken down warehouses was, was there. The mine, I'd climb up the mine shaft, get under some of the rusty barbed wire there to keep the nippers out. You know, I could chuck half ender down. It would take 10 seconds before you had either sploosh at the bottom. 32 feet per second per second, I hit. 3,000 feet, you know, work it out. Probably more than that. Anyway, long way down. Long way down in lots of old stuff. Coal they used to mine. Of course, there's, they're not making coal anymore. There's no coal being made, I should say. All the coal in the world is uh, its all one layer, really, more or less. Put down in Carboniferous times, 300 million years ago. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you. Trees, they like to grow big, don't they? In order to grow big, they need lignin to make them woody give them a bit of strength on, on the trunk. Of course, when lignin was invented, there was nothing to, to ate the lignin. Nature hadn't invented anything to, to ate the, the lignin. But nature don't like a vacuum. So uh, eventually, you get bugs. I don't mean dudley bugs. I mean germs or fungus or whatever used to break down the uh, what, what became peat. But the peach you got nowadays, you've got stuff that'll, that'll eat that now, but back 300 million years ago, there were nothing that'd eat it. And it used to get compressed. Lots of pressure with the sediment on top of it. And heat. Then it eventually turned into coal. That's what we got. That's why we got coal. Any road. Um, around that time, lots of big trees, tree roots, horse tails, ferns, that sort of stuff. I'll show you some. Here's some horse tails. You get these around nowadays. They're very big nowadays, but they used to be a lot bigger then. And uh, got some things called uh, sigillaria and stigmaria, that's tree roots. And you see these little uh, depressions on here, little holes. That's. Um, the fanny bits and plumes and twigs used to stick out. See better on this this one here. Funny thing about these, these some fans look. If you have to get a little armor and bust it up the side in the crack, you'd find other things inside. I ain't gonna do that because I'm afraid I'll bust the whole thing. But here look. Lepidodendron, that is. Here's another one. You see, that's like a tyre track. Lepidodendron. Lepido means scale. Dendron's tree, obviously. It's like a Lepidoptera. Butterfly class. Lepido scale. Patera. Yeah, don't say the P, but Patera wing. Scale wing for butterflies. How about that then? Another in here, look. One thing I day find is dragonflies. You used to get uh, giant dragonflies called mega neura. Mega as in big, neura as in nerve. Say nerves though, they're brains. It's named mega neura by this other chap called Brogniart, who was the grandson of the uh, the one that named the Dudley Bug, Brogniart. No, another French paleontologist. It's funny how they all stick together, these blokes. Any road, so that's the funny thing. Is it's quarter mile down the road, Carboniferous. Quarter mile up the road, Silurian. 
100 million years difference. A little more carboniferous is about 300 to 360 million years ago. Silurian is um, about 400, 420 million years, something like that. Why is that? Oh, I don't know. I suppose it's volcanic activity. And the, the Silurian would be below the Carboniferous, but if you're mining it and you throw up the stuff, then it obviously comes on the top, don't But nowadays, that Ash Mounds place is an industrial wasteland, particularly interesting industrial estate. But uh, talking about the weird terror. I heard on the news about uh, Tyrannodons in Cambridge, Cambridgeshire, they'd reclassified some of Now the funny thing is, this is a bit of a link really, because um, I'm living in Cambridge now, there's no work in Black Country Speaker. My granddad used to work there, he used to make things, you know, don't make anything there nowadays, it's uh, only mix soft video. In road in Cambridge, you've got Jurassic, which you ain't really got much of in the Black Country. That's what you can find. And I've found some busting Bellamites. And uh, where am they? Here, are, here it is. Look at this. Busting. It's like um, squid. Like that. Now, what used to ate these for the tay was... Plesiosaurs, Nycthiosaurs, now I was, I've got some else here, scrabbling around in a quarry, and I looked up, what did I see? A vertebrae, I said to myself, look there's a little ammonite squashed this and all, bit of a backbone from a sea monster, used to eat all the blood bellumites for its tay, but the funny thing is about this uh, 100 million years difference, it's difficult to, to talk about it, eh? Because you, you can't conceive of that amount of time. You think about my arm here. Yeah. This is the beginning of life on Earth. Tell you really, it's just my arm. Down here it would be germs and that. Then uh, multicellular creatures, trilobites up here about. Dinosaurs around here. And then small mammals at the end here. Primates at the end, then Mon right at the very end, right at the very end of your fingernail. Or, um, let's see, if you look at me watch, another way of looking at it. Think about it being 12 hours. Quarter past would be about uh, Silurian, 25 past about Carboniferous, 22 about Jurassic, and then right up here, about one second to midnight would be. Uh, human beings but any road that's about it I suppose but you don't find dragonflies that big nowadays do you because um, they're two foot they used to be two foot even more but it's because there's a lot of oxygen in the air in carboniferous times you, you don't have much nowadays especially near Tipton it's near 10% I suppose 20% everywhere else. About 30% oxygen in Carboniferous times. So I'm told. But, eh? Now, it ate, it ate pearls before swine. I've told you before. If there was swine, or swinish, they'd be wallowing in muck with the snouts in it. They wouldn't be perching in front of a computer. Now, it's finished now, any road.